I can bet you any money that the number one heard tip for Cece Cape is practicing your past papers, especially paper ones because we all know by now that the questions are often repeated. But I can also bet that you don't hear enough that you- Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm Nas. And yes, it is that time of year again where you gotta get your head in the game, gotta get your, get your, get your, get your head in the books. And last year, I did part one of this video sharing five mistakes you need to absolutely avoid when preparing for a CSEC and also sitting the exams. And now I have five more mistakes for you to avoid. So let's get right into them. Number one. So I'm sure you have your pack of past papers for paper ones pile up, paper one for kill because they know so you have to practice so you can memorize what was what came. So when you go back in the exam and you see the repeated question, you can just shade, 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 no questions asked, no double checks, nothing. But guess what? I bet you any money that you don't hear enough that sometimes, remember say we, you know, we know that the questions are repeated. CSEC knows that we know this, right? And they won't necessarily stop doing that. But what they will do to trick us um, is they might reword the questions. So you want to be careful that you're not so programmed and excited when you're going to exam and you say, oh my gosh, this was, this was on the past paper and the answer was D, so I'm going to shade D, but the answer is no A because they reword or reorder the MCQ or reword the question. So it looks like the same question because you're seeing familiar words, but now it's different, it's tweaked. So I want to encourage you that when you go into examinations, be careful not to think that you know it all because the question looks familiar they just might use that to trap you so ensure you still read the questions carefully and don't shade D when the answer is A. Number two neglecting studying according to your learning style so if you know say you're a visual learner then I'd encourage you to study with you know whiteboards study with flashcards study with videos um, if you think you're an auditory learner then I'd encourage you you know instead of studying the way a visual learner would record yourself actually talking about the notes like word vomit your notes back to yourself in an audio and when you're on your way home from school or you're on your way to school or in your lunch time or your spare time, whatever, when you would be listening to music on Spotify or you would be watching a YouTube video or watching Netflix, listen to yourself, word vomit your modules back to you and you'd be surprised just how much you grasp the information. It's a method of studying where it's like you have the active recall or like the active study and then you have like a passive way of studying as well where you're not necessarily super engaged in the content but in your subconscious it's being registered and so I would encourage you to try out like a mix of the two like active recall active studying and concentration and try a passive studying as well where you're not necessarily narrowing down or focused on the content but you're feeding it to your brain through creative means such as listening to the audio number three is underestimating how much you can learn from your friends now I'm not saying that if if you don't benefit from studying in groups to go study in groups but what I am saying is do not underestimate just how much you can learn from your friends because I have had I have had personal experiences once when I was doing a mock exam for a CAPE subject and there's a particular module that I didn't I just didn't get the time to study for because I procrastinated everything else and didn't get to go over that module and on the morning of the exam me and a group of friends were seated talking about it, you know, sharing info with each other, you know, bouncing off information and everything. And I, there was one particular person in the group where she studied the topic that I didn't study more than the other ones. And so she was actually sharing with me and the rest of us, like just everything that she knew on the topic. And would you believe? that in that mock exam, that that topic is actually what I needed to write on for one of the questions. And I mean, best believe I remembered what that girl said and I wrote, 
yo it was a god thing i was like thank you jesus like what are the odds that right before the exam she just happened to be sharing with me and, and you know sharing with us all the information and her just sharing with us was extremely beneficial so don't underestimate what your friends can teach you because sometimes our friends or peers because we can relate to them better they might be able to better relate information to us and even the teacher don't be afraid to ask your friend what they learned from a particular topic because maybe what you understood is different from what they understood and maybe what they understood is necessary also to add on to what you thought you knew prior number four if you know that you're someone who you know you're you're overly critical or you're an overthinker after exams then a mistake for you is discussing your exam answers with your friends after the exam if you have to dash out and leave immediately leave immediately I, it got to a point for me because i am like this after exams so it got to a point with my cape exams and just exams in general where when it's finished i i leave i don't i don't congregate with persons to talk about the answers because that will make you i mean sometimes it might make you feel good because maybe you have the same answer as your friend but when you don't have the same answer as your friend it makes you feel so discouraged so nervous and antsy and anxious and worried and sometimes you bring on worry on yourself you bring on stress on yourself on your brain so when you do the exam leave it to god when you leave that room leave the exam in that room with the, the examiner and praise that God does the rest because you already did your part. Number five, this is a personal thing, but not creating essay outlines in the exam. Now, for certain subjects, they'll actually have a part to the paper where you can do like a an essay outline or jot on your points before you write your essay and for me personally like I've had experiences where I was writing my essay and it was flowing or I thought it was flowing and when I reached at the third point I just suddenly remember something that I wanted to add to the first point but by then I had already obviously you know reached the third point and the paragraph for the first point was already concluded and there's no more space to like jot down what my new found information and so either I made it work and write it down fine or I just had to let it go and so sometimes you benefit from actually having an outline I mean if you want to just have it in your head before you put pen to paper or you want to actually physically jot down with a pencil your points and the examples you want to mention that you want to expound on then I would encourage you to do that because it will help your essay flow better because having the outline actually makes you move faster flow freer more smoothly and it just works so try it number six which is a bonus is doing all-nighters the night before your exam it's a part of procrastination which we are we've all been there we're probably all still there stop it get some help you know but because of procrastination you end up doing your all-nighters before exams and it just it doesn't it's not good for your body it's not good for you sweetie go sleep I will be hosting once again my annual C6 Spanish marathon. So if you're doing C6 Spanish or you know somebody who is, then email me with it's in the description box. Email me for more details on the date, the cost. Uh, it's gonna be virtual, so don't worry if you're not from Jamaica. Um, it's gonna be virtual, and I would highly encourage you if you're doing Spanish and you really want that help, then I want to share with you my tips, how I did it, especially because. Spanish is like my subject so I really have a lot to share and I want to help you help me help you do get your distinction okay so thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope these tips are helpful please avoid these mistakes get you get your head in the game you gotta get you get you get you get your head in the books That's my way.